This is a behavior called tandem running. These tenrothorax, or also known as rock ants, don't form stable trails with hundreds of ants leading from the nest to the food sources like many other ants do, but instead a scout or forager that has found food may only lead a single ant physically from the nest to the resource. Thereby the following naive ant always keeps contact with the leader ant and when that contact is lost the leader ant stops and waits until the follower has found her again. Some researchers call this a simple form of teaching behavior. Good morning, my life has now officially become a little more stressful. But first, after one try of letting the automatic tracker run for a 20 minute video that failed, and I don't know why, I let it run again on a little less than 3 minutes and yeah, I got a nice little tracker again because I fiddled around with um, the settings and then in 10 minutes I'm gonna make myself ready for uni. As I said, yeah, the stress. It's already getting dark outside so I better go home. Uh, today I met with Dan, my second committee member after Anna. Oh yeah, and I also figured out um, which cameras I will get and which lenses. So I will get cameras worth of um, $5,000 for, for filming my setup for filming my ants. Then by next week I will hopefully get a new room, a room where I can set up a really large arena. And then I can hopefully start with a really comprehensive data analysis and with my next uh, internship with Dan. New personal best, from home to uni in 8 minutes instead of 10 usually. This might be a good day. How does structure influence collective behavior in ants? This rating was weakly associated positively with the number of citations, articles with highly amusing titles, meaning two standard deviations above average in, amu in amusing. <laughs> <laughs> received fewer citations. Okay. So besides the lab meeting that you just saw, I also um, met with Anna to talk about the last steps of the first internship. So it's now the last week of our six week internship and um, yeah, we were talking about how to get something, some data out of it so that we can visualize what I have done <laughs> related to that. I also gave a, a, a practice presentation for the big uh, seven minute uh, presentation next week um, in the Tuesday seminar where the first year cohort sort of uh, introduces themselves and what they did in the first internship. So that kind of frees up my mind to think about more important things, <laughs> I would say. So pushing my um, project further yeah, but at least I think I'm the first one from our cohort that has their um, committee together. So at least that's something. It's pretty difficult for me to juggle the teaching, so the grading of everything, and my project and the other um, assignments that, they ha that I have to do for, for other classes, like the modeling course, that will be also intense. So far I'm still getting enough sleep, so everything's fine. Yeah, I might have to hit my sway on feeling free free. Well. I actually didn't want to record today, but something pretty cool happened. That is, this thing came out. No evidence for tactile communication of direction in foraging lasers ants. With me as the first author. So this is my first uh, publication that I officially have. And now people can read this and cite this and yeah this is sort of uh, my inauguration into academia it was except one day after my birthday yeah i will put a link to that into in the description it is a paper so it may be hard to read but i'm pretty proud that i have a real paper now because i have been reading so many papers in the past and now i'm one of these authors so that's that's pretty a, a pretty big deal, and that also leads me to uh, the issue of of publication pressure and citation and how science works and that in these regards. Was down up in a rut, but now I'm up just like the old me. I need to take a break. Yeah. Wow. So when we scientists have um, completed an experiment or a study, with many experiments, and we have found some results, uh, then we write these results up into a paper. 
this paper is being published by a scientific journal, like in this case it's Insects Sociaux, which is a scientific journal for um, social insects research. Yeah, the way that this gets published is we send in a manuscript. So me, oh, I should probably mention my co-authors. It's Philip Buckham Bonnet, Sophie Everson, and Alva Robinson. Then of course also Thomas Czeskes, my bachelor advisor. We authors send in a manuscript to the journal and then to reviewers, uh, anonymous reviewers, uh, review that manuscript and these reviewers are just other scientists that are um, experts in the field that probably know um, whether what we did made sense and whether it is a good piece of science and then they read it for maybe four weeks or so because you know they're busy then they send it back and we have to revise it and improve things on the paper how we phrase things are sometimes you even have to gather more data or so which we didn't have to luckily and then we send it back and then maybe it comes back to us again we have to revise again so this was the case now yeah we had to revise it two times it took I think a half a year or so until this process was done. However, we finished the experiments um, 2015 and until today it just it was a back and forth between all the co-authors. So yeah, this was a very lengthy and laborious. So this whole process of going back and forth and checking and double checking with different people makes sure that at least it's pretty likely that it is good science that is in that paper and that this can be taken as the basis for future research. Man, this should give or take, yeah. Well, yeah, broke down the doors, I got the keys, now they know all about it. The way I snap on everything you think I'm DJ Khaled. And that brings me to another topic, which is publication pressure. Yeah, well, yeah. I spit a verse and let the mic drop, watch me and your favorite rapper do a face swap. This new shit is Gucci over here, just like I'm goo -wop. and all these new blessings got me screaming hallelujah. So you could say that the main job of a scientist is to write papers, but unlike a book author that gets paid for every book that it's sold, we don't get paid for every uh, copy of the paper that gets sold. And it's that we get our money from grants or the university, so yeah, ultimately also just the taxpayer. So we don't get an immediate benefit from publishing papers and on top of that we also have to pay for it. And that's like $2,000 or so per paper. So why should we publish at all? Well the answer to that is the currency of citations. So when I have published this paper that I have published Researchers in the future can use this as the basis for their investigations and go a little further into um, explaining or exploring things. And when they do so, they have to cite my paper so that people exactly know where their information comes from that they build up on. This is a citation. And the more a paper is cited by others, the more it is seen by the scientific community as valuable because apparently it is very interesting for a lot of the people and um, very important for other people that you have found out this specific thing in your paper. Okay, this one strikes a chord. My ego, that's a double-edged sword, yeah. I had to wake up in the morning, look myself up in the mirror. So partly the status of a scientist is dependent on how many citations he got for all, all of his papers together. And also in how many of these papers were published in a top-notch journal like Nature or Science. So Nature is the one that where you publish there, it is like it's the, the best that could happen to you as a scientist. Correlated to that is the more citations you have, the more likely you're also to get grants or get positions at universities, like to become a professor or so. Indirectly, you are getting paid by having a lot of citations and a lot of papers. Some people argue that we are in a publish or perish culture, which leads to some people not behaving in a scientifically good way and making up data just to get that paper that will end up in nature and have a lot of citations. But luckily that is still only a small fraction, maybe 2% or so of people who ever did really fraudulent um, things just to get citations. But still we always have to be aware of the temptation to just make up data so that it fits our story and that we can get on the cover of nature. 
Um, but yeah, if you're a good scientist, then this shouldn't be a problem. And if you had good mentors, like I did, then this is also not, not a problem. And then we are certainly not safe from fake media and fake data in science, but at least we're as close as we can get. And then we can have an evidence-based society. And this is also what I stand for as a scientist. Hey, what? And your last shout, even though you should. It's been a long day, but you still are good. Just look at all the bullshit that you withstood. And I learned one thing. Fuck what they think. And it's Sunday. Over the weekend I have done quite a bit and one of these things is analyzing some data or so some paths so that I have some data that I can show for the presentation that I will give and I'm on my way to yeah, a practice talk just with our uh, cohort, our six people. The other day a roommate of mine has caught this little guy here in our garden. That is a horny toad or horned lizard and it preys on ants primarily and that is the state lizard of Wyoming and Texas. They are very cute and don't do much. Oh um, but when they are really threatened they can shoot blood out of their eyes. Next up um, is I will get a big arena, more cameras, film for longer and I will probably need a supercomputer for that. New real life applications are finding out what the pattern is, improving the autom autonomous search of robot swarms or um, improve the antivirus software so that not every computer has to have its own antivirus software but that, that can be like an, a searching and um, software that searches on all the different nodes of the, the network. The hardest part about writing your story yeah. is knowing that you work the ink okay. so let's sing, say what I said today I'm a go out my way. I'm a boss of better words to say. Hopefully, we can do some things like this more often if we think it's helpful. Yeah, it's yeah. helpful. So, another week is over, and I feel prepared for the next one. Things are going into the right direction.